Hi guys, welcome to the screencast for my Vikings extended orchestration that I posted a few weeks ago. Um, I've made a few changes to the mix that I posted back then, and so I'll just play it from the beginning so you can hear the new version, and uh, it's about seven minutes long. So uh, just sit back and enjoy, and then we will break down what I did to create this orchestration.
Okay, so um, the main difference uh, in the mix here that I changed is I brought down the volume of this pad from Albion 5 Tundra. Uh, I noticed when I posted it, uh, actually this pad I, I added it at the very end of uh, the uh, process of creating this uh, orchestration and I was kind of just kind of ready to get the whole project done and I didn't realize I had it way too loud. Um, so afterwards when I listened on, listened to the recording on my stereo um, from the YouTube video that I posted, I realized it was, it was really kind of boomy and just way too loud. Uh, so I brought that down. I think it might have actually been at zero dB here, and I actually brought it down all the way to to ten um, minus ten there. So that uh, was probably the main difference. And then I might have might have tweaked a few EQs here and there, but um, otherwise uh, it's pretty much pretty much the same. So, um, in terms of how I approach this, uh, I real I started by uh, listening to the um, recording uh, from the Viking soundtrack uh, by Trevor Morris, and um, and I just sat down with uh, the Bosendorfer piano here from from Logic and played in, uh, as I was listening to it basically, um, all the, the chord changes and melody. I don't think I have the, the original uh, MIDI that I recorded of it, but basically I, I played it all in. I actually didn't play it in with a tempo um, because it's, it's kind of the piece that it's hard to it moves so slowly, it's hard to really have a sense of the tempo. Plus, there is, uh, it's not 4-4. Four, four. I, I didn't actually write in the, the time changes in here, but um, it, it actually does have like, you know, some 3-4 bar measures here and there, uh, or 2-4, or whatever the case may be. Um, and so I, I just played it in with the piano without uh, the tempo and logic. And then what I did was I, I opened up tempo here and I found the right tempo that it should be at uh, so that all of the notes in the MIDI that I recorded lined, lined more or less up to the grid uh, once I quantized them. So. Uh, then I was able to to find the the tempo, which is about sixty six. So uh, that's how I started with that, and then uh, from there it was kind of pretty much just deciding how I wanted to orchestrate it. And I knew I wanted to do a longer version, also kind of a a, a bigger climax at some point. Uh, just because it's, it's such a, a simple but really effective uh, and beautiful um, melody or uh, motif that he created. Um, and so that's the part where the brass kind of comes in. Uh, it really climaxes here, and, and then I brought in these trumpet, uh, trumpet counter melodies uh, that come in. Uh, oh, that's the trombone, sorry. Um, Trumpets right here, um, and uh, so I knew I wanted to do that, um, but I I kind of started out just I didn't really uh, map it out in terms of uh, creating a piano sketch, but I just kind of started out uh, orchestrating his original part, which is kind of a, the very very first uh, I guess about two minutes. Um, and then from there, I just kind of explored uh, using 
using different uh, MIDI instruments, creating different textures. A lot of this is, you may have noticed, it's Metropolis Arc 2. Um, and, uh, you know, so some of the, all, all of the strings are Metropolis Arc 2, with the exception of, uh, I used Adagietto from ADO. Uh, I used that for the bass and and Shelly um, in here at the beginning and then later towards the end of the track. Um, and the reason I went with that is just it's they're, they're the smaller section sizes and Metropolis Arc uh, does have the big sections which can kind of become a bit dense if you're writing uh, like a three-part harmony essentially here or actually well this is actually just two I originally did have a, a third part in there as you can see and um, I I muted some of these notes which are in the cello bottom line just the bass line and then the top two are the cello um, I muted some of them just because they were kind of a little bit too low and were getting a bit muddy um, and so I just went through that and, and found out which intervals I wanted, which ones I didn't want. Um, but that there, the Adagietto library is a, a smaller section size. I think the cello is only six uh, players in the section. So you actually can uh, double that effectively and have like two parts um, and which would sort of make your, your full cello section uh, 12 players in total, and then the bass, I think, is it's only four players, actually. Um, and then uh, on top of that, so we have sort of this string bed here in the, the ADO uh, cello and bass, and then on top of that we have uh, we have the Metropolis Arc Library uh, the, the mid string, which is the celli and violas, I think it's uh, something like eight or maybe six cello player, jelly players, and uh, and then probably a few more violas than that uh, in the viola part. Um, so they they play the what's basically the melody here at the beginning, and the horns double that as well. Uh, actually, Wagner tubas I'm using, I think, and also. Uh, I'm doubling that with uh, uh, the horn ensemble from Berlin Brass. Um, but the, the string midsection plays that at the beginning. Fortunately, uh, it's all within the range because the Metropolis Arc mid string section only goes down to the, the lowest viola note, which is a, a C2. And the lowest note in this melody here, I think, is C sharp 2. Um, so that worked out nicely, um, and uh, and then like I said, we have the horns doubling. Uh, why don't we just uh, let's just have a quick look to the metropolis. Listen to the uh, metropolis here. Um, this library does have a different sound because they, I believe, they had something like. Uh, half of the section playing concertino with mutes, I think, and, or, and then maybe they had, or actually it was maybe ha one, one player in each desk was playing soltasto, I think, or something like that. Uh, so it, it's a very uh, different sound from what you might be used to uh, with normal, with regular string libraries and uh, but it's uh, very pretty, very uh, very light, and uh, a really nice sound. Some people complained about the noise in this library, particularly the strings. Um, but uh, it uh, I haven't found it to be too much of an issue, but let's have a listen to it.
so yeah, you can hear it's um, it is kind of a bit more of a, a subdued sound, um, but very pretty. And of course, it's it's just the lower dynamics uh, than the Tropolis Arc Library, uh, just from pianissimo to to MP. Uh, but uh, as you can hear, um, you know it it can blend really well with other libraries, uh, and, and really do, it does kind of uh, achieve kind of a fuller climax. You can kind of get really a, a, quite a large uh, dynamic change out of it, even though it's just um, two dynamic layers. Uh, let's just maybe bring in the other strings and uh, just have a quick listen to that. Uh, all together just to get a, uh, a sense of all this, the strings together. the arps come in there at the end. Um, uh, that's the irregular arps 2 patch uh, from Metropolis Arc 2. Um, and so why don't we have a look at the horns. The horns here, like I said, I'm using uh, the Wagner Tubin uh, from Metropolis Arc 2. Uh, which is, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I have it here with uh, MA2 brass altogether. Um, let's, uh, let's just have a quick listen to that. And this is all the brass, mind you, from Metropolis Arc 2. I, I bounced it together. Um, so that is Wagner tuba, euphonium, and ring tuba all together. So as you can hear, uh, that's a really, really warm sound, um, and uh, these these instruments are of course, uh, you know, not uh, included in your standard uh, brass library. So 
uh, it was a nice uh, addition to see to the uh, Metropolis arc range to include those instruments. Um, then I, I did find that the Wagner tuba on its own, it, it didn't quite uh, have enough power um, uh, for for this beginning of sections, especially sort of in the, the second half here where it gets a bit louder. Uh, so I did bring in the the horn ensemble from Berlin Brass, the uh, the four four player horn ensemble. Um, but I removed the uh, the FF layer, so it's just the two layers, just to kind of help blend it a little bit better and not uh, not uh, have it sound too disjointed in terms of the dynamic layer. Um, so uh, let's just have a quick listen to that. One thing you probably noticed in that brass is I, I tried to give breathing spaces between the brass players. Um, that just helps to add kind of realism. And you can really kind of notice it. Uh, notice how the reverb kind of helps glue it all together there, where you, you sort of hear the, the tail just sort of dies off a bit just as the, as the, no, as the next note uh, is is heard. Uh, so let's have a listen to this. Oops, let's slow that. Looks like I, I muted those notes, I think, for some reason. Can't remember exactly what went back. And then we go up the octave here. So Wagner and, and horns would be heard in, in octaves at this point. So anyways, that's that. Um, and you can see I, I use the, from Berlin Brass, I use the tree surround A, B, and O, R, T, F mics. Uh, and I just kind of mix those together. Um, and actually, yeah, same as, same as what I used for MA2, Metropolis Arc 2. Um, so that's the brass. Uh, and it is kind of mostly strings and brass throughout. I, I do in my own sections. Actually, I did add in this section, even though it wasn't in the original recording, I added an alto flute part um, just to, and this is from MA2 again, Metropolis Arc 2, uh, and that is heard an octave higher than the horns. Uh, so we're, we're hearing the, the melodies stated in, uh, in, in three octaves. Um, so why don't we have a quick listen to the, the flutes. I really, really like the sound of the, the woodwinds in this library. I think that's definitely uh, one of the, uh, the uh, places where the Metropolis Arc 2 library really shines. Oh, we're playing this from MIDI here, so my hard drive is just warming up. Yeah, so that is kind of a really, uh, almost kind of a bit of an eerie sound, It, uh, uh, but it works really nicely with this, especially where you kind of hear it uh, in a more soloistic context um, in the next section here where I kind of introduce my own uh, orchestration 
of the, the theme and kind of develop it a little bit with just kind of some of my own ideas. Um, so what else do we have at the beginning here? Oh yeah, and then this pad, like I said, I brought the pad in uh, at the end, just because I realized just using all the orchestration or orchestral instruments, it didn't quite have the the almost synthetic sound of the original recording. I'm sure he's kind of using some some type of pad in there, um, some type of some type of synth. Uh, so I I went through Albion Five and I found one pad uh, from the Yarv Pad uh, group. Uh, the one called Tundra, Mod, Mod Wheel is Gate, and that pad seemed to blend nicely, seemed to work nicely with the, uh, the orchestration, so why don't we just have a quick listen to that. has a nice subby bassiness to it. And as you can see, that's basically doubling the uh, the uh, string, the low string part from Adagietto, uh, and then as well as what we're hearing with the, the euphoniums and ring tuba. So those instruments are all doubling each other, playing that same uh, two note harmony accompaniment in the lower register that's accompanying the melody. Um, yeah, so why don't we jump ahead here. Um, We've got uh, the next part here where I use a, a bit of the, the woodwinds from Metropolis Arc 2. Uh, we've got the bass flute flutter tongue effect in there. I use the bass clarinet air sus as well as the contra bass clarinet sus. Uh, why don't we just have a quick listen to those guys all together. Um, Yeah, so those those are some really uh, pretty and kind of eerie uh, effects. Uh, kind of just kind of makes you think of uh, you know being on the, the long boats in the fog, and uh, it just kind of has that uh, really Scandinavian type of sound. Um, and then basically this section, all we're really hearing, I think, is. Is we're hearing those woodwinds and then we're hearing the the uh, high string arpeggiations um, and that high string arpeggiation uh, kind of really fills that all in there so you kind of have that constant uh, drone in the string while those those woodwind effects are kind of coming in and out and then the alto flute is playing the melody um, so really simple but really effective uh, and really pretty orchestration there um, then moving on, we have the choir that comes in, and this is actually, I think, uh, right now, and it was pro probably my favorite part of the Metropolis Arc 2 library is the choirs. Um, they are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, just, they just have a really, uh, really 
just pure and realistic sound like it just it just feels like you're in a cathedral and you know it's almost like the choir is real and it's singing to you um why don't we just have a quick solo of that Oops. Yeah, so that you can hear, and that's just a really great sound. Um, so basically what I have here is uh, we've got um, the, the male choir singing below the three, three bottom lines here, and then the female choir is singing the top two lines. Um, and so that is what we got there. I, I mean, three is kind of a lot to double up uh, a whole male choir, but it just sounded great as it was. So I thought, why not? And um, overall, I mean, that's kind of the, the body of the orchestration in this section. And then we've got uh, the bass line is being doubled by the low string patch from Albi and Tundra here actually uh, just because the the low string patch in Metropolis Arc 2 is in octaves and I wanted I wanted it in unison and uh, Tundra has has the bass uh, all the all the bass patches uh, bass or the, the low string patches bases and Shelly are in unison in in Albion Five Tundra, uh, so I used that the used the long silken concertino patch, which also is probably uh, maybe a bit more of appropriate sound for this section uh, as opposed to the uh, the long articulations in uh, in Metropolis Arc Two. Um, Yeah, actually, now that I hear that, I don't think that that isn't in unison, mind you. That is in in octaves, I think. Um, but it uh, it ju it just fit better with this section, so that's why I went with that patch. Um, then we do have have the mid strings coming in there briefly, I think, or maybe we don't. What is that? Yeah, here we go. So just for a brief part there, they kind of come in and then come out. Um, and it's mainly mainly the choirs, and then we got the high strings playing those arpeggi arpeggiations still. Uh, do we have harp? Oh yeah, so we got harp here as well. Um, again, uh, a really, really nice uh, addition in this library. 
Uh, I think I'm using I'm using two patches together here, kind of the harp sus and the harp trim trim swell long, and so they they kind of interchange throughout this section here. Yeah, so and then all together, like you heard, uh, it just kind of all comes together nicely. Now. So then this next part here, so that part was basically just a restatement of the original theme by Trevor Morris. Um, they're, they're actually, that theme is actually kind of three parts. Um, like I said, the first two minutes of this uh, track kind of from measure one here all the way to uh, measure 35 or so. Uh, that, that was Trevor Morris's original composition and then that's kind of like the first first uh, let's say about 15, 14 or so measures are part A and then it kind of goes into the part B which is where it gets bigger and then uh, part C it drops back down a bit and then we just kind of hear strings here. So that there are those three parts. They're all a little bit different. They they kind of the beats kind of change a little bit. He he kind of has like sometimes a chord will be held for like seven beats, then it'll be held for five or six beats. So it's kind of a bit random that way. Like I said, I didn't enter in the uh, the the measures for that in here. I just kind of uh, I mean it was all quarter notes, so I just. I didn't bother with that, but um, so that part that I just replayed, that is based essentially a restatement of the part B from the original first two minutes of the orchestration. And then the part he here with the flute effects and stuff, that is, that was just kind of my own sort of riff that I used to kind of bridge between uh, those two sections. Then from there we actually go, I believe we go back, actually yeah, we go we go to my own kind of uh, development again and we are hearing uh, we're hearing that mainly in mainly in the strings and choir and then and then sort of part way into it we bring in some low brass here and this time I don't use the uh, euphonium and, and ring tuba from Metropolis Arc 2. I use the uh, trombone and tuba from Berlin Brass and this is just to help uh, build it up a bit more because we have those higher dynamics in Berlin Brass um, and uh, and then also to bring, so we can bring in the trumpets from Berlin Brass for the the climax when we hear, um, we hear them, we hear the main theme again, the part B, um, but this time with the the trumpet 
counter melody. Why don't we just have a, a listen to that, to the Berlin brass here. Actually, let's listen to it with the horns as well. And then we'll have a, a full picture of how the Berlin brass sounds. Yeah, so that, uh, this is the, I believe this is, I recorded this with the, uh, the Berlin Brass point, uh, 2.0 update. And so you should be hearing, I think, some of the improved crossfades. Uh, some of the crossfades in the library was um, a, a bit phasey, I think, when it first came out, particularly the trombones, uh, which I'm using here, um, the trombone sustains. Um, and so I think you can hear it sounds a little bit, a little bit smoother there. Um, so yeah, that that kind of helps build the climax there. We get we get the full brass, uh, and then we have basically we have everything that we have before. Um, we got the Wagner tuba in there as well, playing an octave below the horns, and we got the choir. Um, Oh, the, the children's choir, which I did use here as well, that fades out uh, just before we get into the, the climax there. Um, but the children's choir is uh, sounds pretty good too here. Why don't we have a listen? And then my hard drive's just warming up again. Yeah, and then yeah, we get into the climax. Um, so a lot of extra percussion that I brought in here uh, compared to the beginning. Um, so we've got uh, some gongs, uh, timpani, of course. Timpani is kind of working a little bit with that uh, bass trombone staccato that you heard in the brass. Uh, the bass trombone and tuba are, are in unison, uh, I believe. I sure that they are in unison yeah and then the bass trombone towards the end switches to staccato at a few points while the tuba still holds the holds the sustain there uh, but the the timpani and bass trombone 
kind of work together there towards the end. Uh, we've got bass drum bow or uh, bass drum, um, and we've got uh, got. I think we've got some march. I think I actually used all this percussion. Uh, all the all the orchestral percussion is from uh, from Cineperk, I think, except for this. Uh, patch here, which I think is a mark tree from Symphonic Orchestra. I think I just like the like the way that one sounded for that particular moment, so I used that one there. Uh, or actually, sorry, bell tree, um, and then that, that was Symphonic Orchestra bell tree, and then we switch actually to the Cinepark bell tree here. So we hear that there. Um, yeah, and then that's that's pretty much the percussion. There's a little bit of harp in there as well. I think those are just, uh, yes, and some sustains. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much the climax. Um, and then after that, we continue on into the, the same part C that we hear at the beginning here that is repeated at the end here uh, with the the horns kind of encounter melody to the melody back in the in the mid strings um, and then we kind of have just a final kind of restatement again of the part B and this part we hear this time we hear the melody in the, the uh, trumpet vibrato from Berlin Brass, um, which I really like. Uh, that was definitely uh, a nice uh, addition to that library. Um, I, I was coming from Berlin, uh, from uh, Hollywood Brass, and the vibrato in there was fairly limited. Uh, you just had, I just had the one patch, I think. Uh, but this you got you got you got legato vibrato uh, in Berlin brass, so you can really do some nice things with that. Um, so let's just have a listen to that on its own. Yeah, so really pretty uh, patch there. The trumpets are, are probably probably the, the instrument that shines the most, I think, in Berlin Brass. Um, like I said, the trombones, trombone sustained patches were a bit weak when it first came out, but the uh, the update really improved that, and I think I think we'll just keep getting uh, future updates that will improve that library. Um, but the trumpets uh, definitely were. Uh, uh, definitely the standout in that library. Um, and then other than that, oh yeah, we have the, uh, the, uh, string low brushed pizzicato concertino from, from Albion Tundra, Albion 5 Tundra. Um, and why don't we just, uh, have a listen to that. Really nice subby sound to the to this patch.
Um, I think so. That was a a, a round robin by Thor Patch, but uh, I think there was one round robin that was kind of just sometimes in the pizzicato, especially with uh, you know this extended technique with the concert eating, you can kind of get a lot of that really uh, high resonance, um, high frequency resonance, and one of the round robins in there was just a little bit too much of that high frequency, and I just uh, took it out because you can actually take out uh, some of the round robins in Spitzfire patches. You, as you can with uh, orchestral tools patches, you can kind of remove some of those round robins that you maybe don't uh, particularly want uh, for whatever you're doing. Uh, and then strings are actually switching to the tremolo slow from Metropolis Arc 2. And uh, let's just have a quick listen to that. It's a, a nice, nice extended technique because uh, it's a, it is a slower tremolo, and uh, so it just has a really sort of relaxed, gentle, kind of pretty sound to it. got the, the high strings playing that irregular arc as we heard earlier in the piece. Uh, so that uh, that is pretty much it. Um, in terms of our mix here we've got uh, a lot of EQing going on here. I, I did kind of need to uh, do, I mean I never really do any major huge tweaks unless it's for like uh, some kind of special uh, shaping of the sound or whatever, but um, there is a fair amount of, of EQ going on here to get everything to, uh, to work together and, and blend. So um, in terms of reverb, uh, we've got uh, Hamburg Cathedral, uh, two second uh, from East West Quantum Leap. Um, to give us a really nice lush sound. Uh, uh, these are just the uh, patches that I didn't bounce to to audio tracks. Um, so I've still got those loaded in here. I think we've got all the mics loaded in, or most of them. And I just did the mixing in there. Um, so anyway, I think that, uh, that kind of gives you a good overview of uh, of this uh, composition. I hope you guys like it. I think I'll post a another video just of this updated mix. Um, I don't I don't really want to take the old one down just because I well it took a while to up that load and I'd have to I'd have to recreate that video again which is kind of kind of annoying but uh, I'll just post the updated mix as a new video so that you can listen to it by itself. Um, let me know if there's any questions you have or, or anything else you'd like to know. Uh, I have a few more um, uh, orchestration mock-ups of uh, film and TV music that I'm working on, so I'll, I'm planning to do a few more videos like this uh, down the road, so let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to address in terms of my approach to uh, the breakdown of, of how I create these mock-ups. Um, so yeah, uh, hope, hope you enjoyed it and have a good one.